Have you ever wondered what tools hackers use to hack and crack Wi-Fi passwords? As a cybersecurity expert, mastering Wi-Fi hacking and Wi-Fi password cracking is essential for securing networks and building confidence in navigating the complex world of cybersecurity. These tools are specifically designed to identify vulnerabilities in Wi-Fi networks, allowing you to exploit them in a controlled and ethical manner. Incorporating these tools into your arsenal equips you with the practical skills needed to strengthen network defenses and stay ahead in the ever-evolving cybersecurity landscape. If you are anxious to dive deeper into Wi-Fi hacking tools, stick around. In this video, we will cover a list of essential tools, complete with their descriptions, usage, unique benefits, and whether they are preloaded in Kali Linux. Get ready to enhance your cybersecurity knowledge and take the first step towards mastering Wi-Fi hacking techniques in this full guide on Wi-Fi hacking. Disclaimer, the information provided in this video is for educational and ethical purposes only. Hacking into Wi-Fi networks without authorization is illegal and punishable by law. The tools and methods discussed here are intended for use in legal, ethical hacking scenarios, such as penetration testing with explicit permission. Always ensure you have proper authorization before conducting any security testing on networks. Wi-Fi hacking refers to the process of compromising the security of wireless networks to gain unauthorized access. It involves exploiting vulnerabilities in Wi-Fi protocols, configurations, or passwords. While often associated with malicious intent, Wi-Fi hacking can also be performed ethically, such as in penetration testing, to identify and fix weaknesses in a network. Before getting into tools, we will discuss some technologies used in Wi-Fi networks and also how this technology works. Technologies used in Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi utilizes several advanced technologies to enable seamless wireless communication. It primarily operates on radio frequencies, including 2.4 GHz, 5 GHz, and with newer standards like Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 7, the 6 GHz band providing faster speeds and less interference. Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing, or OFDM, ensures efficient data transmission by encoding digital data across multiple frequencies, reducing interference. Multiple input, multiple output, or MIMO technology allows routers to use multiple antennas to transmit and receive data simultaneously, enhancing speed and coverage. Modern Wi-Fi also employs beamforming, which focuses the wireless signal directly toward connected devices for better range and performance. To ensure security, encryption protocols like WPA2 and WPA3 protect data transmissions and prevent unauthorized access. These technologies, along with evolving Wi-Fi standards such as Wi-Fi 4, 802.11n, Wi-Fi 5, 802.11ac, and Wi-Fi 6 and 6e, with 802.11ax technology, continuously improve wireless connectivity, speed, and reliability. How Wi-Fi networks work Wi-Fi networks work by transmitting data wirelessly using radio waves between devices like laptops, smartphones, and smart home gadgets. At the core is a wireless router or access point, which connects to the internet through a wired connection like fiber, DSL, or cable. The router emits radio signals over specific frequency bands, typically 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz, with modern Wi-Fi standards also supporting 6 GHz for faster communication. Devices scan for available Wi-Fi networks identified by their SSID called Service Set Identifier and connect using a password if the network is secured. Once connected, the router and the device exchange data through packets, small chunks of information transmitted wirelessly. Technologies like OFDM and MIMO enhance data transmission speed and efficiency. Wi-Fi encryption protocols, such as WPA3, ensure that this communication remains private and secure. The router also manages traffic, routing data between the internet and connected devices, allowing seamless browsing, streaming, and communication. Wi-Fi hacking attacks, eavesdropping or packet sniffing. Eavesdropping, also known as packet sniffing, is a type of Wi-Fi attack where an attacker intercepts and monitors data packets transmitted over a wireless network. This attack exploits the unencrypted or poorly secured communication between devices and the access point. Using specialized tools, the attacker captures data packets as they travel across the network. If the network traffic is not encrypted, sensitive information such as login credentials, personal data, or financial details can be easily extracted. 
Even on encrypted networks, attackers may still analyze metadata or attempt decryption techniques to gain access to the information. Rogue Access Point A rogue access point attack occurs when an unauthorized wireless access point is set up within a network, often by attackers to trick users into connecting to it. This malicious access point may mimic a legitimate Wi-Fi network by using a similar SSID to lure unsuspecting users. Once connected, the attacker can intercept, monitor, or manipulate the victim's internet traffic, potentially stealing sensitive information like passwords, banking details, or personal data. Organizations can mitigate this risk by implementing wireless intrusion prevention systems, monitoring networks for unauthorized devices, and educating users about verifying network legitimacy before connecting. It is also called EVIT twin attack and honey spot attack. Dethenication attack. A deauthentication attack is a type of denial of service or DOS attack targeting Wi-Fi networks, where an attacker forces devices to disconnect from an access point. This is done by sending fake deauthentication frames to the target device or the access point, making it appear as if the request is coming from a legitimate source. The attack disrupts the connection between the user and the Wi-Fi network, leaving the victim unable to access the internet. In many cases, attackers use this technique to force victims to reconnect, enabling further attacks like evil twin setups or credential harvesting during the reconnection process. Since these attacks exploit vulnerabilities in the 802.11 Wi-Fi protocols, they are difficult to prevent entirely. Man-in-the-middle attack. A man-in-the-middle attack is a type of cyber attack where an attacker intercepts and potentially alters the communication between two parties without their knowledge. In the context of Wi-Fi networks, the attacker typically places themselves between a user and the access point either by using a rogue access point or exploiting vulnerabilities in the network. Once the attacker has positioned themselves in the middle, they can eavesdrop on the transmitted data, steal sensitive information like login credentials or financial data, and even inject malicious content into the communication. These attacks are particularly dangerous on unencrypted networks, but they can also affect encrypted connections if the attacker is able to bypass security mechanisms. Crack attack. A crack attack or key reinstallation attack is a vulnerability in the Wi-Fi Protected Access 2 or WPA2 protocol that was discovered in 2017. It exploits the handshake process used to establish a secure connection between a device and a Wi-Fi access point. In a crack attack, the attacker intercepts and manipulates the key exchange messages during the four-way handshake, causing the victim's device to reinstall the same encryption key multiple times. This reinstallation weakens the encryption, allowing the attacker to decrypt and potentially alter the transmitted data, including sensitive information such as passwords or personal details. The crack attack affects all devices that use WPA2, and its impact can be mitigated by applying security patches provided by device manufacturers. Session hijacking. Session hijacking in the context of Wi-Fi hacking refers to an attack where an attacker intercepts and takes over a user's active session on a network, typically after the user has successfully authenticated to a service or application. In a Wi-Fi environment, this can occur if an attacker is able to capture the session tokens, or cookies, transmitted between the victim device and a server, often using multiple tools. Once the attacker gains access to the session, they can impersonate the victim, bypassing authentication and potentially accessing sensitive information or performing unauthorized actions. This type of attack is most effective on unencrypted or poorly secured Wi-Fi networks. To protect against session hijacking, it is crucial to use secure protocols like HTTPS, implement TLS for data encryption, and avoid connecting to public or unsecured Wi-Fi networks. Additionally, using VPN can add an extra layer of security by Encrypting the entire connection between the device and the internet. Wi-Fi phishing attack. A Wi-Fi phishing attack is a type of social engineering attack where an attacker sets up a fake Wi-Fi network that appears to be a legitimate or trusted one, such as a public hotspot or a network with a similar name to a nearby legitimate network. Once victims connect to this rogue network, the attacker can intercept any data transmitted over the connection including sensitive information like login credentials, credit card numbers, or personal details. The attacker may also redirect the victim to fraudulent websites designed to capture additional sensitive information. 
these attacks are particularly dangerous in public spaces, where users are more likely to connect to unfamiliar networks. WPS PIN attack A WPS PIN attack targets the Wi-Fi protected setup feature, which is designed to simplify the process of connecting devices to a wireless network by using an 8-digit PIN. However, WPS has a significant vulnerability. The PIN can be cracked through a brute force attack. The 8-digit PIN is divided into two parts. The first four digits are used to generate a checksum for the last three digits, which reduces the total number of possible PIN combinations to just 11,000 instead of 100 million. This makes it relatively easy for an attacker to guess the correct PIN within a short time frame. Once the PIN is successfully cracked, the attacker gains access to the Wi-Fi network, allowing them to steal sensitive data or use the network for malicious purposes. Wireless Jamming Attacks Wireless jamming attacks involve sending a signal, such as white noise on the same frequency as the Wi-Fi network, trying to disrupt its operations by causing interference. These attacks can result in slower network speeds or even bring down the network entirely. Max spoofing attack. In a max spoofing Wi-Fi attack, the attacker changes their device media access control, or MAC address, to a legitimate device on the network. This may allow the attacker to access the network without needing login credentials. Wi-Fi hacking tools used for penetration testing and security auditing. Now we will discuss about Wi-Fi hacking tools, which are used to perform such attacks, any other attacks. Wi-Fi hacking tools, Aircrack NG. Aircrack NG is a comprehensive tool set for auditing Wi-Fi network security. It works by capturing packets from a target network and cracking WEP and WPA or WPA2 encryption keys. The suite includes tools for packet injection, monitoring, and capturing making it ideal for attackers trying to crack passwords or analyze network security. Aircrack NG is highly effective for brute force attacks and can also be used for network analysis and packet sniffing. It's one of the most popular and widely used tools in the Wi-Fi security community. Wireshark. Wireshark is a powerful network protocol analyzer that allows users to capture and inspect the data packets that are transmitted across a network. It supports a wide range of network protocols, making it useful for identifying vulnerabilities in a wireless network. For Wi-Fi hacking, Wireshark can capture unencrypted packets, analyze traffic, and detect flaws in the network's security configuration. It is commonly used for eavesdropping, troubleshooting, and finding potential weak points in a network. Kismet. Kismet is a wireless network detector and sniffer tool that passively listens to wireless traffic and detects networks, even those that are hidden with SSID suppression. It works by scanning the airwaves for Wi-Fi networks and capturing the data transmitted over them. Kismet can identify rogue access points, unauthorized devices, and monitor channel usage. It is especially useful for reconnaissance, allowing hackers to gather information about the network security setup before launching other attacks. Wash. Wash is a command line tool designed to identify wireless access points that have WPS enabled. It is typically used as part of the Reverse Suite and is invaluable for penetration testers and security professionals assessing the vulnerability of Wi-Fi networks. WASH scans for WPS-enabled networks and provides detailed information, such as the BSS ID, channel, signal strength, and whether the WPS lock is active. This tool is especially helpful in determining which networks are vulnerable to WPS brute force attacks, allowing users to prioritize targets for further testing. Reaver. Reaver is an advanced tool designed to attack networks using Wi-Fi protected setup, which is commonly used for quick device pairing on routers. WPS uses an 8-digit PIN, and Reaver performs a brute force attack to crack this PIN. Once the PIN is discovered, the attacker can retrieve the WPA or WPA2 passphrase of the targeted network. Reaver is highly effective against networks that have WPS enabled, making it a valuable tool for penetration testers looking to exploit weak WPS configurations. Fern Wi-Fi Cracker It is a GUI-based wireless penetration testing tool designed for cracking and auditing Wi-Fi networks. It supports WEP, WPA, and WPA2 password recovery, and includes features for network traffic interception and session hijacking. Fern Wi-Fi Cracker is user-friendly and ideal for beginners, offering a straightforward interface to automate many complex tasks, like identifying vulnerable networks, capturing packets, and launching dictionary or brute force attacks. Additionally, 
It includes network monitoring capabilities to detect unauthorized devices on a network. It is widely used on Linux distributions, especially in penetration testing platforms like Kali Linux. Fluxion. Fluxion is a social engineering tool that targets WPA and WPA2 networks by launching an evil twin attack. The tool creates a fake access point that appears to be the legitimate Wi-Fi network. When users attempt to reconnect, they are tricked into entering the Wi-Fi password, which is then captured by the attacker. Fluxion automates this process by presenting users with a fake login page, resembling the legitimate router login page, and harvesting passwords through user interaction. Wi-Fi Wi-Fi is an automated Wi-Fi hacking tool that streamlines the process of cracking WPA and WPA2 networks. It is designed to target networks that use weak passphrases by automating the process of capturing the handshake and attacking it with a dictionary or brute force method. It is highly useful for penetration testers looking for a quick and efficient way to crack Wi-Fi passwords without manually intervening in the attack process. Pixie WPS Pixie WPS is a lightweight tool used for offline brute force attacks against Wi-Fi protected setup WPS PIN, targeting networks with weak or poorly implemented WPS. Unlike traditional WPS attacks that require extensive time and multiple attempts, Pixie WPS exploits vulnerabilities in the WPS protocol specifically in the random number generation process of certain routers. By analyzing captured data from a WPS handshake, Pixie WPS attempts to calculate the pin much faster. This makes it a highly effective and efficient tool for penetration testers assessing the security of WPS-enabled networks. It is especially useful when time-sensitive or stealthy operations are required. BetterCap BetterCap is a versatile and powerful network attack and monitoring tool. It can perform a wide range of attacks, including man-in-the-middle attacks, DNS spoofing, and session hijacking. For Wi-Fi networks, BetterCap can be used to intercept traffic, modify data, and inject packets into the network. It is particularly useful in situations where att attackers will analyze network traffic or manipulate communications between devices. Wi-Fi Pumpkin Wi-Fi Pumpkin is a framework for creating rogue access points. It allows attackers to set up fake access points that look like legitimate ones and trick users into connecting. Once connected, the attacker can steal sensitive information, inject malicious payloads, or redirect victims to phishing websites. It is a popular tool for Wi-Fi phishing attacks and provides additional features for network sniffing, DNS spoofing, and more. Airgeddon. Airgeddon is a multi-use tool for wireless network auditing that can perform several attacks, including deauthentication attacks, evil twin attacks, and WPS pin cracking. It is a bash script that automates the process of exploiting common Wi-Fi vulnerabilities. AirGen also supports advanced features like attack logging and the ability to work in environments with multiple devices. It is a valuable tool for both beginners and advanced penetration testers. Kali Net Hunter. Kali Net Hunter is a mobile penetration testing platform for Android devices, specifically designed for Wi Fi and network assessments. It supports a wide variety of Wi Fi hacking tools, including Aircrack NG, Reaver, and Wi Fi. Kali Net Hunter allows users to perform penetration tests using Android smartphones, making it convenient for field work. It provides a comprehensive set of tools for wireless auditing, sniffing, and cracking passwords. That's a wrap on our deep dive into Wi-Fi hacking tools. We covered how Wi-Fi technology works, explored the tools hackers use, broke down common Wi-Fi attacks, and even got a glimpse of how these tools function in action. If you found this guide insightful, don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Got questions or topics you'd like us to cover next? Drop them in the comments below. Stay curious, stay secure, and I'll see you in the next one.